In 2019, Google did something incredible. They took their flagship phone, cut out all the features that nobody really cared about, and released a mid-range Pixel device at a very nice price. Based off recent rumors and leaks, it looks like Google is gearing up to do the same thing this year with the Pixel 4. So here's what we know about the Pixel 4a so far. Thanks to some renderings put out from OnLeaks, who has an incredible track record in leaking accurate information about upcoming smartphones, we got our first look at the Pixel 4a and honestly, it's not bad looking. It's got that classic Pixel vibe, but let's just go over what's different about this phone. First is the bezels. Overall, pretty thin and a lot of screen real estate compared to the past Pixel phones. Uh, the sides are a little thicker than the Pixel 4, but that top and bottom are much smaller, which makes it pretty clear that the Pixel 4a will not include Soli, which is the radar technology found in the Pixel 4 that powers facial recognition and hand gestures. And quite honestly, I don't think people are going to miss that feature from this phone. Don't get me wrong, I love to see Google pushing for more innovation within their phones, but the bottom line is, Soli was just not ready for prime time yet. People really wanted to keep that fingerprint unlock, and when Soli is enabled on your Pixel 4, it just drains your battery. Speaking of fingerprints, you'll notice that the much beloved fingerprint sensor has made its return to the back of the phone as well as the classic headphone jack. And for the first time ever, on a Pixel phone, we are going to see a hole punch style front facing camera off to the left of the screen. The pro of a hole punch camera in the corner is it creates a better viewing experience in general. However, for those who take a lot of selfies, there may be a slight angle issue when taking those photos where you have to kind of angle your phone a little bit more than if the camera was in the middle. Personally, I would prefer to see Google follow what OnePlus 7T did with its front facing camera and just throw it right in the middle. It looks good there. So because there is no giant head or chin on this phone, we'll likely see a better screen to body ratio than the actual Pixel 4. Another big rumor about this phone comes from fellow YouTuber Dave Lee, who believes that the Pixel 4a will launch without an XL version with it. And this would also be the first time a Pixel device would ever launch without an XL variant. And he cites the fact that the Pixel 3a is selling insanely well, but the Pixel 3 XL is struggling big time. And that makes sense to me. The price jump from the regular size to the XL for someone who is already shopping in that eight to $900 range, they don't care as much about that price difference as someone who is shopping in that budget range, that three, $400 range. So uh, I can see why the XL is not selling well with that mid-range phone. And one thing that lends credibility to this claim is that there is currently only one code name, Needlefish, that is likely associated with the Pixel 4 and not a second known name. Personally, I am not 100% sold on this yet. I see the logic, I understand it, but I just don't see Google ditching tradition here and not releasing an XL version. Let me know in the comment section what you think about that rumor. In terms of phone specs, we're expecting it to ship with Android 10, have four gigabytes of memory and 64 gigabytes of storage, and it will likely use either a Snapdragon 730 or 765 processor, which is not as fast as the Pixel 4, but faster than last year's Pixel 3a. To me, the most disappointing thing about this phone would be if it actually ships with four gigabytes of memory. It's 2020, we should be completely done with four gigabyte phones. The Pixel 4 finally bumped up to six gigabytes, but honestly, it should have bumped up to eight gigabytes. I get that this, the 4A, is gonna be a mid-range phone, but come on, four gigabytes, it's getting old. If Google were to actually ship this with six gigabytes of RAM, that would probably be enough to win me over, and this phone would sell like hotcakes. When we look at the back of the phone, the camera module is smaller than the Pixel 4, and that's because it appears Google will be going back to the old one camera model, which makes sense. What's interesting is that they kept that camera bump design we're seeing on these new flagship phones, including the Pixel 4. You don't have to have that bump with one camera, but it appears they're doing this to ensure that the phone style, the look, 
is clearly associated with the Pixel 4 family. So definitely a design over functionality decision here. So that's what we know so far about the Pixel 4a. They are likely going to announce and release this phone in May of this year, and I'm really hoping that Google sticks with that $399 price point. If Google puts out something that's even just a little bit better than what the Pixel 3a is, and it looks like they're going to be doing that, and they, and they keep it at that same price point, they are going to have another monster hit on their hands. And why not? You're pretty much getting every great feature uh, from those you know, premium Pixel phones and you're getting it at half the cost. And sure, the build quality is not going to be as nice as the flagship Pixel 4 phone, but that doesn't mean that it feels like a cheap phone. I'm expecting a hit phone this year with the Pixel 4a and I think it's worth waiting for. So for those who are just way too anxious to wait and they need a good phone right now, the Pixel 3a, even here in 2020, is still a very impressive phone. And I'll go ahead and link to that phone down below for you. Let me know what you think about the Pixel 4a or even just Pixel phones in general. Do you think Google can come back from that fairly disappointing Pixel 4 launch and claim its spot as one of the top flagship phones? And do you see yourself buying the Pixel 4a or are you likely to wait until the end of this year to see what else comes out? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. And of course, if you wanna stay on top of the latest and greatest in the world of tech, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you'll see more of this guy in your feed. Until next time, my name is Brandon Hassler and this is Tech Auto TV. Oh,